Hi everyone, so today I'm going to go through a replay that I played on Doolin Book, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I was playing against uh, Sprite and they won the roll as you can see. So I just wanted to put this video out to show sort of how to break the Sprite board, because I do break the Sprite board, so we'll see how I go about it. And um, we'll definitely talk about some misplays, because there's 100% some misplays on my behalf and I don't know his hand until now. So I can't see if he made any misplays. So first of all, we're starting into red on his side. Um, just basically tells you, guarantees that he's got blue in hand or, or jet. Probably probably blue because you couldn't jet back into the starter. So I'm, I'm instantly getting reads off his hand straight away. I'm thinking, I know he's got a blue in his hand already. So like, there's only three unknown cards in his hand now. Which obviously are the Pixies, the Veiler and the Jet. Um... I've got a Magnemute, which is actually insane um, to break a sprite board um, because it's just 2-5. You get another 2-5, buddy. Like, if you can drop this in their turn, I'd heavily recommend doing it uh, before they get to Gigantic because then you've got two 2-5 two bodies on the field and that, that can really do some damage. So, as you can see, there's no going certain cards as of right now outside of like, the Kelbeck and Magnemute, but <laughs> I agree with what everyone's saying. Kelbeck is sort of a fair contract. It's not very good against most matchups. And then uh, I think I do draw a talent, so that, that certainly does help. Um, so yeah, so he, he blues into carrot, so straight away now, there's only two unknown cards in his hand, because why would he not get jet if he didn't already have jet? So I'm sat there right now, I know jet, and I know carrot. So only two unknowns for me to play through, which is good. So yeah, and then uh, we jet into the starter again. So right now I'm thinking... If he's added starter, he's either got no follow up, or he's got, or he's already got smashes. So I'm sort of putting one of these two cards on smashes because I feel like you could get some follow up through this board already. Um, I personally would have grabbed smashes here, so that's what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking starter smashes one unknown. Um, it's just getting a good read on the hand. Gigantic. So there's no time for me to drop the Magnum here, which is pretty upsetting. Um, that is the case quite often though. Then he specs Pixies from the hand. Um, this is a bit greedy I think on his behalf because he could have just sacrificed the carrot or something and kept the Pixies unknown and the Pixies unknown in the hand would have probably won in the game whereas I don't think the carrot did. But so I'm literally thinking now in his hand he's got starter smashes like I know everything right now. Obviously I don't but I think I, think I do. So, in a standby, I'm thinking he's going to use Toad to bring out another Swap Frog, but then he uses Star in a blue. This is definitely a misplay on his behalf, because even if he'd have just kept that starter set, I would have played around it thinking it was a Smashers. But now, I, have, I don't have to worry about Smashers, because there's no way he has Smashers, because uh, obviously he's got no back row. Uh, and he blues into, I think it's, does he blue into Jet here? I think he blues into jet. Yeah, so he blues into jet. Um, now, I thought about dropping the Magnum in the standby. But then I was like... To, to, to basically make him have to use the Toad. And then have to use the Red if he wants to negate the search effect for the end phase. But I don't know, I wasn't really keen on the idea. But I thought what would be a great play was to just open up with Keldor Pitch Kelbeck. Because then... I've got Shuffler on field, and that deals with the Elf, barring in a gate. I've got a Miller, which is going to just get me some plus advantage. And then I'm getting another card back in my hand, which will be in the form of a Nagido, um, which is, if he doesn't negate this Kelbeck, you know, he's going to get a Gido, and I think it's just going to be too many bodies for him on the field to deal with. So, yeah, so I've got some in the Kelbeck here. Um, search Gido, like I said, and now... This basically forces him to have to negate the Kelbeck because if he doesn't negate the Kelbeck, he's getting a Gido drop the name, which is going to be Baguska Zeus. So, you know, you got to be careful there. So this is just an insane, an insane first play because it baits out so much stuff and I still have the body, I still have the Shuffler and I haven't used my normal summon. Like, this is sort of what you want to be doing. You want to be looking at your hand and just thinking, what is going to bait out the maximum amount of interruptions? And, and just go with that. So what have we got here? So so he towards negates the Kelbeck. Fair enough. 
Um, and then I jumped forward a little bit there. Yeah, he, um, so he grabs back swap with the toad, and then on res, obviously, I don't have any quick effects, so he gets to use the elf um, to bring back the toad, which obviously I chained the Kelbeck, which then baits out this red. Um, so the red's used, the elf's used, he's going to get another toad back though. Um, so, but at this point, if I Magnamute now, um, then that's that's going to clear the toad one way or another. So he's going to have to tribute the toad to negate the magnum search effect, or he's going to let it go. I'm going to get a plus, and I'm going to go battle phase. I'm going to kill the toad and take an omni to get off his field. So he has to do something. This re this magnum is really really forcing. So he has to toad negate it. He takes it and he sets it. Um, right now I look at my hand. If I activate this talent, it's getting negated by the carrot. Um, then I'm putting everything on. A normal Merle and uh, and a Talents mill. Um, sorry, a normal Merle and Scream mill, which is mill six. I should I should hit off it, but um, I don't really want to take that risk, so I go Scream first, and then I do my chain links in such a way. So if you're lucky, I do Merle one, Scream two. Now this is me basically trying to get him to force out this. Um, negate with the carrot because once he force out the negate with the carrot and he tributes he's not going to tribute the, the elf because I'll get the search so he's going to have to tribute the red then all I do is talents take the carrot make sprint and then I played through it again and and then if he negates a sprint I can crash the elf and he's literally passing with the magnum and that's it so there's, you know there's a lot there's a lot going on there's a lot of different players I could do here but See, so your carrots negate, which which I expected, and I was happy this happened because now my talents are definitely going through. But then he veiled at the Merle, and I was like, oh, I didn't really expect that. But now I know his hand is just, uh, I know his, I know his hands just swapping um, jet now, so I can just talents take the carrot, make sprint, and then sprint stem Merle, and I'm I'm definitely winning. Uh, what I should have done here, so this is there's two misplays. Um, breaking his board that would have definitely well I solidified the game anyway but it would have made it a lot easier um right now he dropped the card if if a card or cards is sent from the hand or deck to your opponent's graveyard a card was sent to his graveyard I should have spec this Agido right now brought back the Kelbeck and I could have had a, I could have had a Zeus as well and and the Baguska would have definitely outed the other card um so this was this is a huge misplay I should, really should have dropped the Agido right now um, but I didn't, so that was that was really that was bad out of me. So then I was talents to take, and I don't know why I always was going to take the carrot. I always thought about taking the carrot because I can't kill the carrot, but I can kill the elf, and the elf already uses effect. And if I take elf, I've got nothing to bring back. But I don't know why I just accidentally clicked the the the, the elf. I'm not I'm not sure what happened there, but I suppose two misplays back to back. I don't know if I was tilted off the Agido play that I just messed up with the talents. But this just goes to show you've really got to be on the ball, and when you make it, when you make a mistake, you've really just got to let it go, and not let it tilt you, and move on, um, so you don't end up making mistake after mistake after mistake. Because against like the top players, obviously you're not going to win the game, even if you make a misplay, which like if you, if you make one misplay, you're probably not going to win the game, unless like they've opened really bad. Um, but if if you can get away, like most players, you're going to be able to get away with making one misplay against. And in this case, obviously, I made I made a misplay against this guy here, and I do get away with it. And then I made another misplay, and I get away with it again. So like I was really fortunate, but it's still still bad for me. But anyway, moving on. So I'm obviously trying to just play my best despite misplaying. So I go um, sprint, uh, pitch Merle. I know he's got he's got nothing to negate because I know every single card. Um, so Merle effect, have to go into kick Kalos and I have to search Reno Heart here. Um, kick Kalos effect. So basically, what I'm trying to do here is I'm guaranteeing a Rue Kalos definitely, but if I mill another name right and and like and and something else, so if I mill like a name and a Bisted or anything, I'll be able to make a uh, Mud and then I'll be able to make Dweller and that Dweller will be big, and I'll be able to clear the board. But obviously, I don't mill a name here, which 
you know, it's not the end of the world. I can still out the board, but the thing is, if I'd have taken this carrot and made sprint, I could have crashed the sprint at the elf, threw Kalos over the magnum, Reno hard directly, and he's literally left on. Well, I've cleared everything I can clear, but obviously I didn't do that. So we have Nace into the Rukalos going in the battle phase, and all I can all I can attack over is this carrot, uh, which is what it is. It's my own misplay, but it was definitely correct to kill a carrot there because if I don't kill the carrot, he um he has the level two as special summon the jet, so I have to kill the carrot and leave the Magnum, even though the Magnum can kill the Reno Heart. Um, he flips his pass back to him. He draws Vela. He flips the Magnum, to calls its effect, but you can't because um. If this card is special summoned, uh, you can add. So you can't do that. Um, and my scream as well. It's only when normal or special summoned, so I can't use scream either. So a little bit sickening. Um, but then he normal summons or he normal a swap. I use the the scream and I hit Shirin, which is really important for me to hit a name here. So then that means I can make um, Kid Carlos. Okay, Carlos and Havnes. Oh, by the way, I'm sending Havnes here just for the, if he, if this was a bisted, I mean, I'd negate it anyway, but if this, if this was a bestial, and I'd, I'd use this to negate it by, by attributing this, by the way, but if, um, if it was a bestial, I'm sending this, sorry, if it was a bestial, then the Havnes would be banished and the crime could get it back. I still like playing crime. Uh, so make the Jake Stapelia and then instantly I call the Jake Stapelia on a swap frog because I know he's got jet in hand and now because I have shufflers I have what well, I have one shuffler if he makes elf here um, he can well he, first of all he can drop the jet but then the only other play he's got if I Jake Stapelia this elf is to make dark then dark back my magna mood then make elf then elf bring one back, then jet summon. But obviously I've got a shuffler to deal with the dark, so I think it's a pretty close game. And then he admits defeat as soon as he, he targets the Magna. And uh, as soon as he realises it's over, he admits defeat, which is fair enough. So now we go back into the second, we're going to the second game. I'm going second again. Got a talent and got a dark hole aside. Dark hole and again sprikes is actually pretty useful just to to drop the dark hole and then they have to toad negate it and then they don't have I don't have a monster so they can't bring back the X Y Z with elf so it's pretty good. Um. So I let go. He normals the red specs, the blue specs, the jet searches the double cross, which I had to look what this card does. Basically, take one monster in the field. Of an even graveyard, activate one of these effects. Attacks a targeted, attach the targeted monster to a rank two monster you control. So basically, take it and put it on the gigantic, or you can put the targeted monster into the link zone, or you can special summon a monster from either graveyard to um, a zone the link two monster points to. You can only use once per turn. No problem. Gigantic, gigantic effect. Swap, swap, send, swap. Just very standard. Um, Toad here, right? So he's got, he's got at the moment, he's got double cross. I know he's got double cross. I know he's got Toad. I know he's got Elf, and I know he's got three unknowns. So it's like, it's really, it's not like the last game where I could piece together. I was only left with one or two unknowns in his hand, probably just one really. Um, obviously now, I, I don't know anything. Could be three bisted. It could be. Uh, Bisted Ash, Bisted Vela, Vela Ash, you know, there's infinite possibilities his hand could be, and it's just about testing the water. So, I do draw phase, spec the Magnum out here, and the theory behind this is I'm going to get turn player priority in the draw phase. So, I can go Magnum out, and then the Magnum out's on the field, and if let's say if he toad negated, so he toad negated, I go um, main phase one, turn player priority, use Dark Hole, he can chain Elf bring back the toad, but then the dark hole resolves, the whole board's cleared and then I win. Um, so that's a theory here, and I still get the talents because he'll chain the elf to summon, well I don't even know if he would do, yeah he'd probably chain the elf to summon the toad to get the add back. But he plays it correctly, he doesn't negate this, I used the effect as well thinking he would negate it, but he doesn't. I thought about going battle phase here, but he's just going to take the magna, um, and attach it to the toad or put it to this zone or whatever and then I dark hole and a toad negate and there's really much 
there's only too much for me in this game. But so I dropped the dark hole first, and then I'm thinking I offered him a take. He didn't want to set it. I don't know why he wouldn't want to set a dark hole. It's class. But um, yeah, so he's adding that back, and obviously changed the elf. But now what I can do is I can go magnum attack over. He's going to take it with double cross. I've got talents to burn the toad, and then I can play off a normal summon merely, which is obviously incredibly risky in a free, in a free um. But it's you've got sometimes it's not like it's not finding the best player thinking oh that player is definitely the best player it's finding the only player that wins because if there's a player that is good but doesn't win the game but it's not as risky as the one that would that could win you the game basically if you've got a zero ch zero chance of winning the game and a really risky player gives you like a 0 0.1 chance of winning the game well then you have to take that 0 0.1 chance because you weren't going to win the game anyway so you might as well gamble and just see if you win because you were going to lose anyway so yeah, he takes, he takes that. Toad to get the talents. He takes it this time. Obviously, I go. Um, it's it's all on the Merly Mill, which he veils. So, game three, uh, game three. Let's have a look at the open hands. Cause I'm pretty sure. It, oh yes. So this is the problem with Sprite when they're playing 21 hand traps, going, um, going second game, whatever. They literally have so much chance of bricking or if you just stop the starter or like they you know if they just draw blue on its own it's no good that sort of thing there's just so much chance of bricking so I do every time I always try and start early where I can as uh, so I start sharing where I can because then that almost guarantees that I can uh, I have I can sort of play through a bisted because let's say let's say the bestial the first one uh, bestial the first effect I can just normal summon. Let's so let's say I hit a Havness or whatever. So if this case, I could um, obviously I had the Merly a normal summon. I could make Sprint, but let's say that wasn't the case. I could Shirin pitch um, the Havness. Let's say it's Merly was a Havness. Uh, use the Havness effect. I get bisted. I get to normal summon the Keldo and make Redoer and then Redoer effect and I'm I'm away. So that's good. But obviously I get shifted. So I just got Goose Girl and a pass. Again, he draws Jet Sea. Like this, just isn't a good draw. And now it's it's just clean up crew really here. Um, mill three. Uh, so basically, yeah. So so Merli effect Vela, Pellerino effect Ash. It's you. It's still fine. It's still very very fine. I thought about attacking here, and then I thought, now there's no point. I'll just go for game because he's used he's used Ash Vela. If he's got one more hand trap, then I'm pretty confident he wouldn't be able to out with sprint anyway. So. Uh, through a halfness anyway. So then yeah, so I make Sprint, Sprint effect, Merly, Merly in the uh, Kit Kalos. Uh, I think it's again, it has to be a Kit Kalos search Reno. This is such a good play because you're replacing a 2-3 body with a 1-5 body, so you only lose an 800 attack, but you're getting a mill 5 and you get another fusion, so maximum damage output, this is really good. Obviously I should have su summoned this um, summoned this Reno before I sent the kit, but I summoned it to a different one anyway, so you can forgive me for that one. So mill 5, um, Hit both the names. I try a mill fifty four by the looks of things, but hit both the names. Um, well, hit one name and the other, and then this is a ridiculous amount of damage because this is, you know, the Pellerino giving this uh, an extra five hundred and it being able to do double damage is four k off that instantly anyway and three five off that. So it's it's way it's way game, but I was trying to um, I was trying to. Uh, to get to game through a bestial so uh, this is the board that i wanted to do because if he has a bestial obviously i can uh rue kalos pitches reno heart reno heart pitches the happiness reno heart comes back um lots of game potential there so yeah uh thanks for watching i hope you learned a lot about how to break the sprite board 